All right, got a little training video here for economizers. Basic operation is what I'm going to try to cover here tonight. Uh, this is a, assume this is a carrier rooftop unit with Honeywell economizer, black box motor, and the black logic modules. Most of these are obsolete now, but they're all over in abundance on the roof, so we're still working on them every day. So this little display I've got set up here is a common thermostat, which is in the store, terminal strip uh, in the unit, um, on a carrier unit, uh, logic module either mounted on the front of the actuator for the 7400 series, or a little bit after that, they used the 7200 series logic module, which was the, the camelback or the humpback unit that was the module was mounted separate in the economizer hood, and then the motor was below that. Um, and then we've got a number one compressor, number two compressor. This here is uh, the contactor for the compressors. Outdoor air temperature enthalpy sensor mixed air temperature sensor. Uh, the SR and SR plus terminals typically aren't used but they always have a little jumper with a resistor in them. That, those terminals are for the optional dual enthalpy if you wanted to use a return air temperature enthalpy sensor along with the outdoor air and then it it looks at both of those enthalpies and it determines which air is the better air for cooling. Uh, and then the P and P1 terminals on those logic modules always have a little jumper on them, no resistor, just a jumper. And that is for the option of using a remote controlled minimum position. You could put a potentiometer in the store. Hardly ever see that on commercial equipment. So, um, we're assuming that the unit has power to the unit, to the R terminal. Uh, the thermostat is powered up, but we don't have a call for fan or any calls for cooling, as shown in the diagram here. So, again, assuming a carrier rooftop unit for this conversation, if we get a call for cooling, so we'll simulate a call for the G for the fan, we energize the, the G on the terminal strip on the unit, and then we would energize the relay for the fan relay which would turn on the indoor fan, the blower. At that point it would close a set of contacts. This is how Carrier does it on their units. York and Lennox do this very similar to this. You have to look at the wiring diagram of the unit but when the blower comes on it closes a set of contacts somewhere and it energizes the logic module for the economizer. Until the blower is on, the economizer has no power to it, so it's not trying to economize, not trying to run minimum position. If it's 10 degrees below zero outside and the unit's satisfied or running heat, we don't need fresh air coming in without the blower running. So now we've got the blower running, we've got power to the module. Uh, at this point, the module will, the actuator will run to minimum position at 10% for minimum fresh air, but nothing else will happen. We're not calling for any stages of cooling at this point. So now we're going to simulate a first stage call for cooling. So Y1 from the thermostat into the unit's terminal strip, from the terminal strip through the factory wiring harness. That Y1 wire travels out through the blower section and it goes to terminal 1 on the logic module. So terminal 1 on your module is Y1 in if you wanted to test it. That way if you're having problems with your economizer, one of the first things I do is test, make sure I'm getting a, a Y1 24 volts on terminal 1 to ground or common. That would tell you that the thermostat's calling for first stage of cooling comes into terminal 1, comes down and there's a dry set of contacts within the logic module and those contacts are open when the logic module is in the OK to economize mode mode of operation. So we're going to simulate that it's 50 degrees outside so our enthalpy sensor 
is sending a signal to the logic module on the SO and PLUS terminals. And when it does that, the logic module will turn on the OK to Economize light. When the OK to Economize light comes on, is when it will start to activate some of these switches inside the logic module. You can't work on them, there's no relays to replace. But when it does that, it closes this set of contacts, which now allows the mixed air temp sensor to drive the actuator so that the unit can start to economize. It will now call for Y1, doesn't come out and go to a compressor. It activates this set of contacts, so now the mixed air temperature sensor is driving the actuator and it's trying to achieve a mixed air temperature of 55 degrees. So, mixed air temperature sensor here in the blower section connected to the actuator, the logic module, and it, the actuator connected to both these sets of dampers will modulate these dampers to achieve a mixed temperature. uses outdoor air and return air, both being drawn into the unit. Its target is 55 degrees discharge temp. Regardless of the outdoor air and regardless of the return air, its mission in life is to get to 55 degrees here. If this temperature here is too cold, it will close the outdoor dampers and at the same time, because they're mechanically tied together, will open the indoor dampers. It'll get less cold air, more warm air. It'll, it, it keeps modulating this to get to this target temperature. So as the outdoor temperature changes, it will add or subtract outdoor air to get the achieved 55 degrees. Oops, almost lost my board there. Uh, now, so now we've got a call for Y1, and we're economizing at 55 degree discharge temp. So now, let's say an hour has passed, we still haven't got down to our set point in the store. So let's say we're at 75 degrees in the store still. We have to have a two-stage thermostat, two stages of cooling, on any unit that has an economizer. Whether it has one compressor or two, and you'll see that as I follow through on the logic here. So the Y2, second stage for cooling now comes in. If it's above 45 degrees outside, we have a low ambient cutout for the compressors. If it's below 45 degrees, it cuts out the compressors because it assumes that you can't get any better discharge temperature by adding a compressor if it's already 45 degrees outside. So second stage of cooling into the terminal strip out of the terminal strip, out to the economizer, through the low ambient cutout. It'll Second stage of cooling always comes in on terminal 3. From terminal 3 goes through this switch and it diverts that second stage cooling call to terminal 5 within the, the logic module. And then there's always, typically, on a Honeywell, a little external jumper from terminal 5 to 2 on the outside of the module. You can see that sends the signal to terminal 2 and then the second stage call for cooling and the blue dotted line here second stage again starts the first stage compressor economizer is our first stage of cooling and our first stage compressor is our second stage of cooling now most of you know this but the reason we do that especially on a carrier unit on a Lennox on a York many units the evaporator is the first stage is the lower half, the second stage is the upper half. If you run a second stage evaporator without running the first stage compressor, when you're condensing moisture, you'll have water shedding down the front of the second stage, and when it gets to the dry section of the first stage evaporator, that water is running down trying to get to the drain pan, it won't run down the face of that first stage coil. It'll start to the water will start jumping out and you'll get water leaks in the store. So that's why they run the first stage compressor for the second stage of cooling when you have an economizer. Economizer is always assumed to be the first stage of cooling until it's told that it's not available. So that's how it works whether you have one compressor or two but you can see the importance if you only have one compressor and you don't 
use a two-stage cooling thermostat or you have a two-stage thermostat and in a lot of cases what I see is guys don't run the wire from the thermostat to the unit. Even if you only have a unit with one compressor in it, a five-ton carrier, one compressor, you need a two-stage thermostat for cooling. You need both wires hooked up, and this wire is hooked up from the factory from carrier for a reason. It has to be there. You have to tell it you need more cooling than the economizer sometimes for it to bring on the compressor along with the economizer. So now let's simulate... The sun came up, it's warming up outside, it was 50 degrees outside. Now let's assume that it's 70 degrees outside, for conversation's sake. The enthalpy sensor is now telling the logic module that it's not okay to economize. So the okay to economize light has now shut off. This contact opens. This all happens simultaneously, guys. I, I can't draw that fast, so bear with me. Um, this contact switches. Again, this all happens at the same time. This one opens, this one closes, and this one closes all at the same time. When it's not okay to economize, so now it's 70 degrees outside. So now our first stage cooling comes into terminal 1, comes down through that set of contacts, to terminal 2 and comes out of terminal 2 and starts the first stage compressor or keeps the first stage compressor running. Second stage of cooling now comes into terminal 3. Instead of going to terminal 5 it's diverted to terminal 4 and it now starts the second stage compressor. This contact is open so now we are not economizing anymore. We're just running on two stages of mechanical cooling. So that's the logic of how it switches back and forth, one stage to two stage. Spend a quick minute here on troubleshooting. One of the first things I will recommend is that to verify the actuator works and you've got a good working actuator, easiest thing to do is to use the minimum position potentiometer that's on the logic module. Once you've verified you have power on the module, on the TR and TR1 coming into the module, adjust the minimum position and the actuator should drive open and close. Then you can say, yes, I've got a good actuator, no, I've got a bad actuator. Now if you want to test the enthalpy sensor, let's say it is 50 degrees outside and your OK to economize light is not coming on. So in that case, you disconnect the two wires for the enthalpy sensor on the SO and plus terminal on the front of the module, disconnect them from the module, and then jumper on the module from SO to plus, when you do that, your OK to economize light should come on. Assuming the bulb's not burnt out, it should then be in the economizing mode. If the unit starts to economize, even if your light's not on, you know you've got a logic module that's working, but you've got a bad enthalpy sensor or bad wires from the module to the sensor. You can easily figure that out. You can reconnect these wires remove your jumper and jumper over here on the enthalpy sensor side and verify that your wires are good. And you can prove your theory that you've got a bad outdoor air enthalpy sensor. Mixed air temp sensor is a little bit harder to troubleshoot on this style of unit because this is a resistance style motor. The, the logic module that mounted on the front of the actuator, those are not 2 to 10 volt DC actuators. Um, that mixed air temp sensor is a 3K sensor, so 55 degrees is about 5.5K. If you want to check it for resistance, you can verify if you've got a good sensor or not. Um, again, the easiest way to check the actuator is by adjusting the minimum position. Um, that gives you a few things to check. You can verify if one piece works or the other. Um, starting point on how to troubleshoot them. Again, I can't stress enough, guys, that one of the biggest mistakes I see on these is the misunderstanding on, especially if you have a unit with only one compressor in it, or two, but especially one, is you still need Y1 and Y2 to 
get the unit to run properly, to give you both stages of cooling. And when you have two compressors, on a Lennox unit, for instance, on a Prodigy, you can actually set the Prodigy for three or four stages of cooling if you want. So, anyway, in a nutshell, that's how they work. Um, I will try to go into some other uh, videos later on. Something else I can tell you as a quick tip, if you do have an actuator that's a 2 to 10 volt DC, a quick and easy way to test them in the field is a 9 volt battery. 9 volt battery is 9 volts DC. If you hook that 9 volt DC up to plus and minus, or the plus terminal, on a 2 to 10 volt DC actuator, you will drive that actuator to about 90%. It's a quick and easy way of testing it. I actually have a signal generator, loop generator, that I can actually, it's like a multimeter that's got some outputs on it. You can actually drive them that way also, but that's another tip, guys, uh, an old service technician tip, a uh, friend of mine taught me that a few years ago. Anyway, that's what I got for tonight. Hope that helps, guys. Um, have yourself a great evening.